Before we get into how to make a yeast starter, let's make sure we have all of the necessary items. You'll need a scale, you'll need an Erlenmeyer flask or a growler, some light dry malt extract, you need a piece of foil, a standard little square of foil, and an oven mitt can be really helpful. If you don't have an oven mitt, you can use a towel. And the funnel is optional. If you're really good at pouring, you probably don't need this. So should you use an Erlenmeyer flask or a growler? If you don't have an Erlenmeyer flask, then you can use a growler. You've probably got them laying around. If you're into drinking beer, let's be honest, you've probably had a few of these in your day. You can sanitize them, they're easy to clean. But if you have one of these, <laughs> it's definitely worth it. I'll put a link in the description so you can find one online. And they're really not that expensive and they're well worth the, uh, the money. So we take our Erlenmeyer flask, we set it right on the scale. Scale is off right now. We're leaving the scale off because we want to account for the weight when we turn it on. Take our funnel, because I'm not a very neat pourer, put that in there too. So now we've got all the weight we're gonna have on here as zero. Now I turn on the scale, it will zero. I'm gonna grab my dry malt extract. You wanna light, as light as possible. You're not trying to make beer right now, you're trying to make yeast. You're trying to replicate yeast. So it, we want it to be as light as possible so it contributes as little flavor as possible when we pitch it into our beer. This stuff is a fine powder, it goes everywhere. And as soon as it gets a little wet, even the humidity from the air uh, will make it really, really sticky. I'm gonna go ahead and pour this in here really carefully. I'm watching my weight as I do this so that I don't go over. Make sure it all gets in there. So right now, I'm checking it. I've got exactly what I need. I'm gonna use 180 grams of dry malt extract, which you can watch a video up here about how that works and how to calculate your numbers that way. But for now, uh, we're just gonna go with this. And luckily, I happen to be right next to a sink. Me personally, I like to add as hot of water as I can because that shortens the amount of time before it boils. I've got 1200 milliliters. So after we've got our mixture all mixed together in our Erlenmeyer flask, I'm just gonna set it right on the burner directly because I can heat this, it's a Brasilicate glass. Fire up that burner to high. One tip while this is finishing up heating, Erlenmeyer flasks are really easy to boil over. So you gotta be careful. One trick I've learned is to pick up the flask very carefully with an oven mitt and just gently swirl it as it's heating early on and you get a little whirlpool going. Now the idea here is that the more evenly the liquid heats, the less likely it is for the inside or the outside to heat more rapidly and then shoot up in a boil up because it hits boil suddenly. This way everything keeps heated homogeneously. You can hear a tinkling when it's about to start boiling. You can also see the hot break, which I'll show you a close up of and I've got bubbles, so I gotta turn down my heat quite a bit so that I don't get a boil over here. I'm gonna get my oven mitt on just in case. You never know when a boil over is gonna happen. And as soon as I start to see this foam start climbing, I'm gonna lift this off of heat. But we definitely have a boil. At this point, do not swirl. The best way to get it to stop climbing is to get it off of that heat. The whole point of boiling this is to sanitize it. We don't want uh, the water or maybe something fell in to the Erlenmeyer flask, maybe the dry malt extract, we don't know. So we're gonna boil it to make sure it is extremely clean. It doesn't have to be a, a really big vigorous boil. We just need to get it to 212 for about a minute or two. Uh, I'm gonna take my foil so that it can also be sanitized and I'm just going to lightly put it over the top. While your wort is boiling, go ahead and fill your sink with cold water so that we can cool down the wort as soon as it's ready. We've got our boiled wort. Let's go ahead and swirl it very carefully to get it mixed in and to get a little whirlpool going inside the Erlenmeyer flask. This helps cool it faster. So every once in a while, you wanna pick up your Erlenmeyer flask and swirl the wort again. What this is doing is as the wort is spinning around, it's constantly bringing new wort to the surface of the glass. 
Right now, our water is cooling only the outside of the glass, primarily the outside. We're gonna keep a cool water on. The idea is to keep this up to the level of the wort. So initially, we don't wanna have ice in here because we have such a high differential between our boiling water and this water. Right now, it's coming out of my tap around 80 degrees Fahrenheit, so I don't really need any ice at this point. Any ice I have in here is gonna be melted down really quick, and it's not gonna make much of a difference. All right, so now I'm down around 100 degrees on my wort, and I'm not getting much more use out of this water that's in here. It's pretty warm, and it's pretty close to the temperature of my wort, it's not gonna get me down to where I wanna be, which is around 70 degrees. So what I do is I have these little containers that I get from salsa and I save them and I throw a little water in there and throw them in the freezer and I get ice blocks. The water is actually getting pretty cold right now. And I'm gonna go ahead and pick up my flask and give it a spin so that I can make sure that I get good contact with the surface of the Erlenmeyer flask and the water. All right, so I've got my thermometer. Let's check and see where we're at right now. Uh, keep in mind, this has been sanitized. Anything that goes into the wort uh, needs to be sanitized after the boil. Drop that in there. Give this a quick little stir. Got about 70 degrees on there, so I think we're done. Now that our wort is chilled, we can pitch our yeast. I've got my vial here, and what I want to do before I open it is I'm going to sanitize this top part. I've got a very small container here of star sand. I'm just going to dip that in there, get it all sanitized. If there was any dust or anything else around the top of that, I'm going to kind of shake the vial just a little bit because sometimes the yeast, as you can see, it will stick to the vial and I want all those, all those good cells to come out of there. All right, so I've got the yeast off of there. Looks pretty good. If you open this directly after you've shaken it, sometimes you'll get a little bit of a Coca-Cola can type explosion. So I just open it very slowly. And when I realize that it's relieved its pressure, go ahead and Unscrew that cap, nice and easy. And then, dump it right on down. The whole thing goes in there. In order for me to use my stir plate, I've gotta have a stir bar. So, this is just a tiny little magnet that goes inside the Erlenmeyer flask. You don't wanna drop it straight down like this. This is metal, it can break the Erlenmeyer flask. Probably, very rarely does it do that but there's no reason to take the risk. You just lean over your flask just a little bit and let it slide down. It's a lot gentler that way. Foil back on. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get the stir bar to line up with the magnet in the stir plate because the stir plate has a magnet in the center and we don't know where this stir bar is. We can't see through our wort. Tilt it about like that so I know the stir bar is now right about here. And then I set it, set the edge of it over on this side of the stir plate and then I slowly move it across the center so I know the center magnet of the stir plate is going to grab the stir bar. Turning our dial just to get the stir plate going. If you turn it up too fast it'll fling the stir bar right off the stir plate. Get it nice and slow, let it get going. Now we don't need this huge vortex on this thing. All we need is just a little bit of a stir to keep the yeast from flocking out on the bottom of the, of the flask and to also keep the oxygen coming in in contact with new wort. That constant aeration uh, helps the yeast grow. Now that we have our yeast starter on the stir plate, we just gotta wait a few days and then we'll decan off the wort so that we don't get any off flavors into our beer and we'll pitch the yeast. I'll show you how to do that in this video right over here. I've had my starter on my stir plate for about 48 hours now. It's time to crash. Crash just means I throw it in the fridge, 
cool it down, it's going to make all those yeast cells clump together and flocculate out, which is what we want. We want a nice solid yeast cake on the bottom and the beer as clear as we can get it on the top. That way, all we have to do is pour off the beer and we've got nice fresh yeast. Trust me, this beer on top is not something you want to serve people, unless you don't like them. However, every good home brewer will taste their starters. I do it, my friends do it, why not? You're probably making a different beer than I am, so you'll probably need to use different numbers for the ratio of DME to water. You may be using a different container, uh, different yeast strain, different beer. You're going to need a way to calculate those numbers. I have a great video explaining how to use one of my favorite yeast calculators. It's called YeastCalc. Check it out down here and I'll show you how to use it.